Maka now the different stuff. Display. Display them. Um, good morning, everyone. Today, uh, Team PUI is going to present the topic of common linear spectra. So, um, we're going to start now. Uh, let's start with the definition of fracture. So, fracture is actually a discontinuity of bone. So, today we're going to cover a few fractures that commonly miss in CT. First is scaphoid fracture, radio head fracture, Montanja, Galazi, neck or femur fracture, misona, Winsfren fracture, and calcaneum fracture. So, um, there are reasons why we shouldn't miss all these fractures. Now. Okay, uh, because it will lead to complications like avascular necrosis, malunion, or non union of the fracture. So um, I'll discuss it in detail uh, at the back of the slide. Lah. So let's talk about the epidemiology of all these missed fractures. So for scaphoid fracture, it actually accounts for 2.4% of missed fractures and was missed at initial presentation up to 40% of the time. Radio head fracture accounts for 33% of elbow fracture and up to 12% of the fracture were missed. Both Montanja and Galazi fracture accounts for 5.4% of missed fracture. For neck or femur fracture accounts for 50% of the fracture, especially in elderly, and which 30% of them are missed. Lesion injury were missed in initial evaluation in up to 20-40% to of the cases. For calcaneum fracture, accounts for 90% of the fracture, and especially in men majority being industrial worker. Okay, um, now let's move on to reasons why we miss fractures. So the first reason is normally failure of taking a good history and proper physical examination before ordering the X-ray. Next, failure to inspect the whole film by concentrating only on a particular area on the X-ray. Failure to ask for opinion when you are in doubt. Okay, uh, next, we're going to start with the first fracture that we're going to discuss today is scaphoid fracture. So, scaphoid fracture is actually one of the most commonly missed fractures. It is a common carpal bone fracture that often uh, occurs after fall on an outstretched hand. So, patients with developed symptoms like pain over the wrist or wrist swelling. So, actually, there are three examinations we can perform to identify whether there's any scaphoid fracture. First is anatomical snuff box tenderness. So you can look at the first picture, the picture A. Anatomical snuff box is this triangle depression of your dorsal of your hand at the base of the thumb. So the radius and the scaphoid actually articulates stick to your uh, snuff box to form the wrist joint. So this is the area of your force to focus up. So in the event of um, trauma, this is a common area where fracture will happen. So uh, you can try to press on this uh, anatomical stuff box. So if a uh, patient develops tenderness, it means that uh, it's highly suggestive of scaphoid fracture. Next is uh, scaphoid tubercle tenderness. You can look at the picture B. So this one is also uh, one of the examinations to determine whether there's any scaphoid fracture as well. Huh? So what you do is you press on your scaphoid tubercle over here. If patient develop tenderness, it's suggestive of uh, scaphoid fracture as well. The picture C is our scaphoid compression test. Scaphoid compression test is a maneuver where we use to examine the scaphoid stability and to reproduce patient symptoms. So you fix the patient's radius with one hand and you give pressure over the scaphoid uh, tubercle. And then you fix the metal uh, metacarpal with uh, another hand. After that, what you do is what you do is you start with the ulnar deviation and then you extend and flexion. When you the, when the pressure over your scaphoid fracture is released, you can feel a club or patient will feel pain. So uh, if patient feel pain or you feel cut during the test. It means that the test is positive. Lah. So patient, uh, it's highly suggestive that patient has a scaphoid fracture. So uh, next, we move on to the x-ray part. So you can see on the first x-ray, you can see any fracture line. Lah. On the next, uh, the, the x-ray next to it, you can see there's a very obvious fracture line over your scaphoid bone. 
So this is a scaphoid fracture. So next we will move on to complications of a missed scaphoid fracture. So if we miss scaphoid fracture, it will lead to avascular necrosis. So scaphoid blood supplies comes from your dorsal branch of your radial artery and your superficial palmar arch. So when there is a fracture, there will be lack of blood supply to the bone. So uh, the necrosis will happen then eventually will lead to bone collapse and then patient will develop arthritis because the joint will deteriorate from the fracture over there. Next is malunion and non-union of the fracture because if you miss the fracture, you won't have uh, adequate uh, mobilization. So hence malunion and non-union will occur. Uh. Next, uh, we'll move on to the management of scaphoid fracture. It actually it divided into non-placement and uh, non-displaced and displaced. So for non-displaced scaphoid fracture, we can put on a short term spica spleen and then this year under auto to review after afterwards. Uh. So for this place, we have to put on a long arm thumb spica spleen and then we refer auto for further management. Next, we're gonna move on to radio head fracture. Radio head fracture is one of the most common missed fracture in our book results from a fall onto an outstretched hand. So patients with developed symptoms like swelling of the elbow joint, tenderness over the elbow, pain with flexion and extension of the elbow, difficulties of pronation and supination of the elbow. So for the radio head fracture, in X-ray, we have to look for seal sign and posterior fat pack. So you can see from this um, X-ray, this, uh, this arrow over here, this is your posterior fat pack. And this silhouette over here, you can see like a scale like this. This is actually your anterior fat pad. Actually, if the elevation of the fat pad that creates like a silhouette sign here, it shows if uh, in the x-ray, you can see there's posterior and anterior fat pad. It actually shows that patient has elbow joint uh, effusion. So it means that uh, it's highly suggestive of radio head fracture. Next, uh, we're going to move on to the x-ray. So you can see very obvious that uh, dislocation fracture. So for radio head fracture, um, if we miss, what will happen? So we will have um, displacements of the fracture, posterior intraosseous injury. Because posterior intraosseous uh, nerve is actually one of the deep branch of your radial nerve. So it actually adjacents to your radial head. So any fracture around your radial head, humerus actually easily affect your posterior intraosseous. So when there's a radial head injury, you have to uh, check for any uh, posterior intraosseous nerve injury. And next is a uh, loss of forearm rotation. So for the management wise, uh, type one is uh, your displacement less than two millimeters. You can just put on a sling placement and DC and your auto. For type two, it means your displacement is actually more than two millimeters. You have to refer auto for possible, maybe they want to do an open reduction internal fixation and so on. Uh. Next is Montinja fracture, actually defined as your proximal third ulnar fracture with associated radial head dislocation. Actually results from fall onto an outstretched hand. So signs and symptoms patient will have pain, swelling, deformity at the elbow joint, limited elbow ROM. So for the examination wise, you might be able to palpate a dislocated radial head. The main thing is we have to see whether there's any weakness of your thumb extension. Because this is uh, to check whether there's any posterior intraocular injury. Okay. So you can look for the uh, extra wise, you have to look for if there's any ulna fracture, and then to check for the radial capetella line. So for the radial capetella line, you can look at this extra A. So normally the radial line it should actually intersect at the middle of your patellum. So if it if it didn't intersect in your center of your uh, capitalum, it means that there's a dislocation, the radial head dislocation. You can see there's a fracture la, the number, the picture, and you can see the picture sorry, extra over here. The capitalum and your radial actually didn't intersect together. So there's a radial head dislocation. Next is uh, for Montanja uh, fracture, we actually have a constraint called body constipation. So it's divided into four types. Type one is your ulna uh, fracture with anterior dislocation of radial head. So meaning the radial head is uh, anteriorly dislocated. Lah. They, uh, type two is your fracture of your ulna with posterior dislocation of your radial head. Type three is 
fracture of your ulna with lateral dislocation of your radial hip. Type 4 is your fracture of ulna and radius with dislocation of your radial hip. So for management wise, we will actually uh, give patient for analgesia for the pain and then we refer auto for reduction and the management. So complications if you miss Mantenja fracture, patient will have mild union of the fracture, nerve injury as I mentioned earlier, uh, posterior interosseous nerve injury that we have to uh, uh, emphasize on, and then patient will have chronic pain if you miss the uh, fracture, and limitation of uh, RM of the supination, coordination of the elbow. Next, we'll move on to a uh, galaxy fracture. So for galaxy fracture, it actually defined as distal third radial shaft fracture with associated distal radial ulna joint injury. So it actually results from fall on the outstretched hand or your direct trauma to your wrist. So patient with develop symptoms like pain, swelling, deformity of the elbow, and limited RM of the elbow. So for galaxy fracture, we actually have to uh, try to uh, examine for the DRVJ instability. So what you do is you apply a shearing force, a shearing, a shearing force on your um, patient's distal uh, out and out now. So you try to compare whether there's any, um, to compare with your non-injured hand. Lah. So you have to ask patient whether there's any pain arise when you apply the shearing force. So actually try to see whether there's any DRVJ uh, instability to test for possible galaxy fracture. So for extreme wise, you have to look for radius fracture and your widening of the DR radius space. So this will suggest, uh, this will actually suggest you that the patient has a uh, galaxy fracture. So for galaxy fracture, actually they divided into type one and type two. So it's a basically, um, it is, uh, it, divided into type 1 is uh, aspect vola, type 2 is aspect dorsal. Actually, uh, this one is actually based on your dislocation of the ulna, see whether it goes dorsally or it goes volally in the x-ray of your lateral view. Next is our management. So for management of the lazy fracture, you have to uh, leave energetic as usual, leave for the pain, and then refer auto for post reduction and definite management. So for complications, if you miss galaxy fracture, you have non-union, non-union of the fracture, and the are of the symptoms. So um, next, we're going to move on to neck of femur fracture. So neck of femur fracture is actually your fracture of proximal femur to the neck, which connects your femoral head and your femoral shock. So in high energy form, uh, normally for young patient, so low energy for an elderly in the uh, first neck of femur fracture. Um, for symptoms wise, patient might have a uh, leg, leg shortening, external rotated, and the pain may be uh, Patient might not be able to ambulate and there's pain in the hip or groin area. For non-displaced uh, fracture, patient might not have any deformities, might be able to ambulate and uh, there's weight pain in the hip or groin area. So for the extra part of a uh, neck of femur fracture, you have to look for a disruption or a shinton line. So shinton line is you measure from the medial edge of your this uh, femoral neck through the inferior edge of your superior pubic bone line. So it has to be a very smooth line. So if there's a disruption of the line, so it actually suggests of your neck of femur fracture. So um, for uh, complications of missed uh, neck of femur fracture, you will have um, risk of thromboembolism and uh, non-union and avascular necrosis. So for management wise, to uh, give patients analgesia because it's very painful, and report auto uh, because auto might want to do a reduction or total hip replacement. Next is our masonal fracture. 
So this is actually in your, a spiral fracture of your proximal fibula associated with disruption of distal tibial fibula syndemosis. So tibial fibula syndemosis is actually your fibrous joint that connects your tibia and your fibula along your entire length. So typically occurs with proximal, oh sorry, pro pronation and extension rotation forces applied to your fixed foot with fracture to a proximal fibula. So typical example is, uh, you know, girls in your high heels and they have twisted ankle. And this is the mechanism, uh, example of your mechanism. So symptoms wise, spatially developed, soft tissue swelling, pain or gymnosis of your ankle. So for the examination wise, you can try a palpate. The patient will have pain over the ankle and then you can do a um, squeeze test. So squeeze test is like this picture here, over here. You, it's to test for a uh, syndromotic injury. So you can actually uh, compress your tibia and fibula above the ankle. So if there's any pain occurs in the uh, area, so it's suggestive of a um, syndromotic injury. Next is you can do a perineal nerve test. So you can see over this picture. So what you need to do is you have to ask patient to lay supine while you flex the ankle and invert the ankle while you keep the uh, knee extension. So patient will actually feel, you have to ask the patient if they feel any pain over the uh, lateral side of your, the outside of the ankle so, and the foot. So if they feel it, then uh, the test is positive. Lah. Next, we will go on to um, X-ray wise, how to identify the fracture. So uh, the first one is well, widening of your medial ankle joint. So you can see from this one, you have to see whether there's any widening of your medial ankle joint. And next, you have to see if there's any widening of your distal tibial fibula syndromosis, like this one. You have to see whether there's any uh, widening. Next is your proximal fibula fracture. And then we can do a stress view or x-ray like this one. So you have to internal rotate the patient's leg and flex the foot up while you external rotate the foot. And while you external rotate the foot, you have to maintain the internal rotation of the leg. So this actually will, uh, will help that give the ankle joint in a neutral position. So you can see in the x-ray if there's any space widening, like it will be very um, obvious if there's any space widening in this stress view. To identify any in the fracture. So um, next is the complications uh, of the fra uh, fracture. If we miss uh, this fracture, so actually patient will have a non-union of the fracture. It will bring a lot of chronic pain to the patient and joint instability. So for management wise of this fracture is uh, we will do cast uh, cast immobilization and this year under auto if there's no any joint space widening. But if there's a joint space widening, then you have to refer also for surgical intervention. Next is our entrance fracture. We define as a disruption of your metatarsal from the tarsal. We emphasize on your second tarsal metatarsal joint and restrict ligament. So normally this is caused by high energy trauma like MDA. So symptoms wise, patient will have Pain localized to the midfoot, swelling, formities, ecumotic discoloration at the plantar midfoot, and typically patients are able to bear weight. So there are actually two examinations we can perform for to test for this kind of fracture. Uh, first is a stress uh, examination. So stress examination is if you have to compress your the patient's forefoot, it will stress uh, the space between your first and second metal muscle, so causing the pain. So or if you feel any palpable click and patient feel pain, so there is a uh, injury. Next is your piano key test. So you can see from this picture, piano key test you just stabilize the head joint, and then you grab the patient's metal and you perform a dorsal tap and 
there are no key tests, you have to stabilize the hind joint, grab the patient's metal torso, and you'll perform a dorsi flexion and plantar flexion at the metal torso metal torso joint to see if there's any pain or So this is our piano key test. So uh, for the X-ray wise, um, it's really the first injury is a very um uh, subtle uh, injury. Lab. So for X-ray wise, you have to look for widening of your base at first and second metal torso. You can see. Whether you have to look for any widening over here and look for the presence of a uh, flake sign. So, flake sign is actually a small bony fragment that you can see in base, between the base of first and second metal trussel and with erosion of your lifted ligament. So, um, because this is a very subtle um, injury, so normally you, you easily miss if you do not pay a proper attention. Lab. Next is uh, management of your injury. So for this uh, kind of injury, you will immobilize the patient with back slap and strictly non-weight bearing if there's no any uh, widening of your joint space. Then you uh, this the auto. However, if there's a widening of your joint space, more than two millimeters, you actually have to refer auto for surgical intervention. So complications if we miss this kind of fracture is uh, malunion and non-union of the fracture. Last but not least, we'll move on to uh, calcaneum fracture. So calcaneum fracture is a uh, fracture of the calcaneum bone, results from fall from height, MVA, or stress fracture with overuse of from repetitive actions. So symptoms-wise, patient might develop a moderate to severe heel tenderness, heel swelling, and inability to bear it on injured foot. So for the examination part-wise, um, you have to look for any hemosis around the heel that tracks distally to the sole of the foot. This is what common do sign. Or you have to see if there's any deformity of the heel extending to the arch or any open fracture in the basal area. So next for the X-ray wise, you actually have to look for any um, reduced uh, bone angle and increase of uh, descent angle. So you can see on the first picture over here, you have to uh, measure on uh, letter X-ray lab. So you have to measure and see if um, you draw a line between your anterior and posterior superior uh, calcaneum, and then you have to measure the angle. So uh, normal angle is 20 to 40. So if there's a, de a decrease in your border angle, so it suggests of a posterior facet collapse lab. And then next is your descent angle. So your decent angle is uh, you measure a line between your uh, downward and upwards of your uh, slope of your calcaneum. So the normal degree is 95 to 105. So if there's any increase increment of this angle, uh, it's actually suggestive of a uh, calcaneum fracture as well. Lah. So in x wise, we look for this bony angle and this angle. So this one is uh, a comparison of your uh, fracture, like you can see from this picture, it's a normal, normal x-ray. You can see this one as a fracture. So uh, what happens if we miss a calcaneum fracture? So complications like subtalar arthritis will occur to patient and chronic pain and malunion of the, uh, in, uh, of the fracture. So management-wise for uh, this kind of fracture is to provide anesthesia for the patient for the pain control. Test and non weight bearing, and then we'll have to DCA the patient under auto Um, uh, these are the reference for my slides today. Thank you. You propose that uh, the hypertrophic test mm -hmm. is in the developing and in your fracture, and so we need to do something like this. So that we can see the feedback of the hypertrophic fracture. So, what are the ways to not get stuck? Thank <laughs> you. 
I think uh, for our EDC, especially in green zone, right, the first thing we should uh, provide is a satisfied location, right? especially you look at the extra right, and far one abnormality and we stop finding it. So actually, we should uh, far one abnormality and then we continue to search for it. Uh, that's the one thing that we want to do. The second thing is uh, we try to do see the bulk view of the extra one like, in 80, maybe peripheral, and maybe other uh, more specific view. So that uh, we don't miss the fracture. So the second thing, the third thing, if even the extra is normal, we should treat as a fracture also, lah. Because as uh, you see, if the ECG is normal, but the patient can't be then we treat still treat as the ACS. The patient is OB, the can't be the extra normal. You think that the lung is uh, normal? No, right? So uh, in a fracture patient, if the extra is normal. The patient, but the patient is under the clinical fracture, look very painful, and a point of tenderness, I think we should try to fracture. This is what, how we run the uh, commonly missed fracture in the ED. Yeah. Anything to add on? Yes. So, uh, 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 sorry, boss, could you repeat the question? I think the other Thank you. 
And then they come with the complaint, especially complaint of sakit sakit and the head is like a pain, like a pain swelling or unable to move. Mm -hmm. Right? Uh, so when you are taking the history, the most important thing that you should focus on is the mechanism of injury. Always the mechanism of injury will lead you to the common fractures that are related to that injury. So kita selalu ni, I pasal tu kita ini kita macam kita quickly rush through the mechanism. Oh jatuh jatuh, okay, that's it. Kita sakit apa nih, right? So focus on the mechanism of injury, then most of the time you will not miss the fracture. Okay, so bagus the mechanism doesn't match with what you see on the on the X-ray, then then you have to take more than that. Okay, so kita nak tanya, doktor di sini, how do we protect the patients from missed fractures? Hmm. If I have need to quick a slow recording. This one kita boleh kisah kalau kita miss kerja, we can call that patient and check the volume. Oh, refer orthopedic lah, it's necessary. So, it's a compulsory and to take a share for take for all case, trauma case yang buat extra. Kita still di jalan eh, but tapi rasanya lama dah. Ramai MO dah tak buat dah. This COVID ni. Yes, dah lupa. Ah, uh, After 24 hours, akan ada report from radiologists. Yes, actually so, uh, before this, uh, kita ada assignment kepada Hausman Postcode untuk trace small case trauma. So, any case picture at that time, the call to the picture. Yes. So, sekarang banyak yang yellow dan sus, kemungkinan kena start balik lah. Yes. Uh, hi, I'm gonna be oxygen. My slide actually is simple. My uh, intro also very simple. Uh, for probably we want because people to be already lama tengok no COVID, lama dah before the journey lah. So uh, my topic is on line and sign of fracture in the x ray upper Why I only cover upper limb? Because uh, too many things to cover. Uh, so my time is limited. I only able to cover upper limb. Uh, so sorry about that. So uh, first of all, uh, there is a multiple lines uh, in the wrist x-ray and also elbow x-ray that we shouldn't miss that. So I go for the wrist first. So for the wrist, right, we should look at the radial lunar cartilage line. Lah. So you draw a line from the distal radius, lunate and cartilage. So you can see the blue, let me find the pointer first. Okay. So this one, the red one is the cartilage and the blue one is lunate and the yellow one is the radius. So you make sure the lunate is rest on the cup of the, sorry, the lunate should be rest on the cup of the radius. And then the capitate should be rest above the lunate in one line. Okay, so this one we call radial lunate capitate line. So in your letter, if you cannot see they are in one line, this means something wrong. There's some dislocation or fracture there. So you can see this one, the lunate is not in the same line with cartilage and also radius. This is what we call spill key cup sign. This is a lunate dislocation. Okay. So uh, and other than that, so we go to the AP view lab. So AP view, imagine that I drive, you are driving a car across the uh, flat stone. So there is no white space between them. So if you, when you have a white space between them, there is some dislocation inside for the wrist, okay? So uh, any narrowing or overlapping 
Wunderbar. Sorry, ha. Boleh. So when you see through the AP line of this stone, you should look clear, uh, carefully whether all the stone are having the space very wide widening or not. The gap is it very widening or overlapping to each other? That's what you want to look for it now. Okay. So, for example, in the scaffold lunate dissoci dissociation, the you can clearly see the scaffold and lunate having a white gain more than 2 mm. So, when the white gain more than 2 mm, we call it as a periformal sign. Okay, so uh, we are quite uh, scared to have a missed this kind of fracture. Lah. Okay, because this kind of fracture, right, the patient uh, most likely won't, won't have swelling, won't have an, uh, tenderness, maybe swelling doesn't have. Maybe don't have bruise. So uh, when you miss it, so it's kind of uh, dangerous for, the, for us. Lah. So we have a piece of pine sign. Lah. So we have, uh, other than you have to look through all the flex stone over the all the wrist joint, to make sure all no gap, make sure no overlapping, and you have to see the shape of the stone. If the, the shape of the stone look like a piece of pine, possible there is a dislocation or some abnormality. Lah. Okay. So you can clearly see that in this, this one, the triangular pin, the lunate is look like a pie. So you want to call it a piece of pine sign. Okay. So uh, we go to the most simple one now, the lunar couple arch in the wrist joint. Okay. Is able to identify ligament injury, dislocation, fracture. Okay. So we have first line. First line is the first line between the most proximal ones, scaphoid, lunar, and trichotrum. Make sure the line is smooth. No right gap between. Okay. The second line is the above only the distal one. Scaphoid, lunar, and trichotrum. Okay. The third line is the carpet and comic. Okay. And then, so for example, case number one. Patient presented with a uh, fall and injury to the wrist. The wrist is swollen and painful. You look at the X-ray. Eh, X-ray number is normal. Other fracture line bone. Eh, apa yang abnormal ni? Tapi patient sakit sangat. So you look at the X-ray. There might be some abnormality. Okay. So you look at the arch. Is it arch normal? The first arch is not normal because you can see. You, okay. First of all, this 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 bone is overlapping to each other. Again. So it's abnormal and the shape is look like a triangle, it's a bit abnormal again. And the arch, the proximal arch is already not smooth. So obviously this is an abnormal x-ray. But for us, if we are busy, so most we are busy sangat, most probably we overlook it. Lah. So just be more careful of it. So this patient, you can see a disruption of the gulila uh, arch lah, on the first one. And the second one also have a not very smooth. And uh, you can see overlapping of the third gorilla actually. So when you turn over the lateral view, you can see a spill cup, T cup sign. This is a lunate dis dis dislocation. You need to reduct, you need to do reduction in the DD. Okay. So, okay. Uh, what Dr. Just now was mentioned just now, don't forget about the mechanism. Mechanism is the most important one. So when you pluck the patient, right? The patient might say, I fall now, I sit down. But don't forget when the patient sit down, the hand also hit on the floor. Or patient fall to the back, patient have a reflex that use the hand to support the patient, support itself. Lah. And then you obviously will have injury over the wrist. So when the patient fall down, don't, don't forget to look at the hand injury also. Lah. Okay, that's what I learned from Dr. Sarah. So it's for this patient. You see the way patient present, he's a 35 year old gentleman. Lah. So fall from the bicycle. So this X-ray not normal, okay? So the gorilla arch not normal, the proximal look normal, the distal arch look normal, and the first, second, third of gorilla arch not normal. The, the stone is, doesn't have, doesn't have white, white gap, doesn't have overlapping to each other. So what happened to this patient? Why is, why is worth for us to discuss all this, okay? So when you look at the wrist, don't forget of the uh, radial ulnar joint, okay? This patient doesn't have fracture, but this patient has dislocation. 
Okay, you can see the radius and ulna. You see the joint, the space is increased. Okay, when you put uh, when you put the side, you can see the radius uh, is disruption. Okay, so for the distal radius ulna joint subluxation or dislocation, you can see the ulna ulna spiral is a more prominent uh, more prominent side now. And you can you can present of a piano key sign when you turn it's it's not it feel like a piano. If you have a play a piano, you feel like dun, 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 it's like something like that. Like, it's all piano key sign. Or you call Uya for Una for the sign up. So actually, when you turn the Una in the inner part of the Una, right, patient feel, feel of tenderness. Like. But this one I think is less sensitive like, because all the patients will complain pain. Mm, but otherwise, the most important thing is the reputation either of a pronation or supination of this. Okay. So otherwise, we go for the elbow line. Now. So elbow line, the first line we go for the anti uh, the line from the anterior surface of humerus, it should pass through the middle of the epidermis. Okay. So uh, regardless of uh, uh, electric or regardless regardless of adult. Okay. So for this kind of patient, like what doctor mentioned just now, um, the super fracture fracture by the following one. So for example, you see the uh, the A, the line already the uh, doesn't the intersect within the middle of capitalium. There's some abnormality there. The second one obviously doesn't uh, go through the middle of capitalium, and the third one as well. Uh. So three of these actually have the balance super fracture with different classification. Okay. So supraconilla uh, fracture most commonly seen in pediatric lab, so be more careful about this kind. So we use the anterior humeral line. Okay. So for the red, we have another line also in the elbow X-ray. So we uh, call it radio capital carpi line. Lab. So when it need to take of the middle section of the radius parallel to it, and then you pass through the center of capital in all stage of fraction. Lab. Okay. So, for example, uh, this patient, this patient, when you draw a radio capital uh, line, it doesn't uh, cross between uh, in the middle of a capital lobe. So this one is already radial head subluxation. Obviously, it's abnormality. Don't forget about our famous question, uh, pediatric ossification center. So in different age group, different ossification, one years old to 12 years old, Having a different ossification, that's not a fracture. So you need to uh, look through it. So there's a uh, easy way to remember crypto A. La. Capitalium, one years old, radiant head, three years old, internet epicondyle, five years old, trochia, seven years old, and nine years old. External epicondyle, 11 to 12 years old. So I think this is one of the points in about X-ray, elbow X-ray. So uh, my take home message. If a patient looks like fracture, but X-ray doesn't show like fracture, please treat as fracture. Okay, because in normal medical patient, ECG normal, chest pain, ACS. Chest action normal, as patient is OV, you cannot claim that lung is normal. You treat as you treat the patient, not treat what you see. Okay, thank you. There's uh, any question for that? Uh, if no, any announcement by boss or any, any announcement? No, sir, I wasn't. Okay. 
tentang ekonomi anak um, kesalahan um, itu sendiri dan sendiri salah ha? itu satu pro berharga dua puluh ribu satu ribu dua puluh ribu dua puluh ribu satu mesin sama dengan itu mesin sekali itu penjagaan dan penyelamatan ada di atas tangan semua orang ha? dan bebas dan kemudian di setiap penyelamatan atau sam perlu disebabkan sebagai Uh, Officer, uh, Officer tidak digunakan untuk menggunakan Officer uh, kecuali disupervise oleh Medical Officer ataupun pakar Medical Officer uh, Setiap okay. uh, segera kalau penjagaan masih digunakan uh, dan um, tata cari penggunaan dan penjagaan tidak dilakukan dengan sebaiknya tindakan akan dilakukan oleh saya uh, Jadi So, Doctor Rasli, so you want to describe the drug in the living ways, you want to speak to the living ways, and the human and the toxic. So, when you want the drug to be diluted, write it as to be diluted, and you want to obtain point. So, if you want to be diluted, or if you Ah yes, you write one thing at a time, dilute in 100 cc of what? Normal saline, okay? Ah, this is empty, this is not empty. Huh? One of the things that's wrong with the second one, then you can do it. That's it. One of the things is that. Okay? And this is not a basic error. You all have to be a part of the right basic error. Ah, sorry. Thank you for the presentation and all the post papa and CD. Uh, we will uh, we already have food provided by our civil center. We have a link. Uh, can go to have some breakfast. Mm, I think so far that's all. Uh. Thank you so much. Stop. 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 Stop.